Ooh, that song get better and better and better. My musical palette is endless, you guys. Welcome to Good Morning NFC East. We're here. This is what you guys have been waiting for. Super Bowl Friday, a football Friday. <sighs> How much work was put in to get here? How much blood, sweat, and tears was shed for the Philadelphia Eagles to get here? How much money was spent by you guys to get here? All the merch, all the donations all the ticket sales, all the jersey sales. How much did it take to get here? Look what it took to get here, but we're here. We've arrived, but the job is still not done. There's more to accomplish. And first and foremost, it begins with defeating the Chiefs in Super Bowl 57. Once again, you guys are locked in on Good Morning, NFC East. I'm filling in for your guy, Jeff Kerr. I am Tone DeSales II. And I got to tell you, I need you guys to smash that like button because today's going to be a sermon. Today's going to be a sermon, and it's also going to be a eulogy. Because I'm going to have to pray for those that we have lost. I'm going to have to pray for those that... We will lose. <sighs> Jalen Hurts, Nick Sirianni, two of probably the most doubted people in the NFL. Remember, you know, I was watching the unscripted episode last night. I'm not sure how many of you guys watched that. But Andrew, William Stark, I don't know if you guys had the opportunity to watch it, but did you guys watch the unscripted episode that came out last night at 9 p.m. on the Philadelphia Eagles YouTube channel? Because I did. And the theme of the episode was Nick Sirianni's rise, or what I like to say is an ascension to notoriety. Nick Sirianni is a guy that came into the league not on, well, let me not say the league. He came into the Philadelphia Eagles organization not on the right footing. He was shamed for his lack of experience. He was shamed for his opening press conference. And I got to admit, it was pretty damn bad. It was pretty damn bad. But what can you expect from a guy who's never done the job before? He's excited. He's a high energy guy. And he wants to come off as buttoned up and as professional as he possibly can. As a matter of fact, I bet you he looked at other opening press conferences to try to figure out how he should approach this. You know, I, I was watching the video on YouTube unscripted and you saw him going through his notes. You saw him studying like a like a senior. In college in the hallway. You, you saw him studying like a kid trying to get his dissertation or trying to complete his dissertation. You, you saw him studying in the hallway like a kid for finals. You saw him locked in. But there was something about the body language that didn't seem confident to me. There was something about the body language that made me scratch my head. That wasn't the body language I was used to from, used to from a guy like Nick Sirianni. So again, he went into the press conference, the opening press conference, his very first press conference as the Eagles head coach, trying to say all the right things and appear buttoned up, appear professional, appear like he can lead an organization. He can lead a franchise. He can lead a roster. That was his goal, right? You can just tell he was trying to be so professional. But let's be frank about this. You look at that opening press conference and you think about who Nick Sirianni, Nick Sirianni is now. That's not who he was. This is who he is. Sometimes to get the job, you got to put on your, as black people would say, you got to put on your white voice. <laughs> you got to speak proper. <laughs> I hope none of y'all took that personal, but that's just the reality for some people that look like I me. Mean, you got to put on your, 
You got to put on your Sunday's best. You got to pronounce your words and enunciate your, enunciate your R's in your, you know what I mean? But Nick Sirianni, I compare it to that because Nick Sirianni was trying to be something he wasn't. He wasn't really himself in that opening press conference. Again, I'm not trying to offend nobody, but the reality is sometimes to get the job, or even if you got the job, sometimes on your first day, you got to put on your, your dancing shoes. You feel what I'm saying? Nick Sirianni had on his dancing shoes in that opening press conference. He had two left feet. <laughs> he had two left feet. But look at him now. Let's really, let's really go through this, right? Let's really... Let's really think about how we got here. Let's think about how not just Nick Sirianni, but how the Philadelphia Eagles got here because it was a long road travel. Remember, they started the season two and five, opened the season with a 32-6 win in Atlanta in 2021. We're taking it back, you guys. We're going to have a little history lesson here. You know, we're going to have, you know, we're going to reminisce, reminisce, excuse me. Opening day, 32-6 win. Everyone thought, oh, man, these guys are going to ball out. This is, this is exciting. Your rookie got a touchdown on his first catch. Uh, Jalen Hurts had a good game. Miles Sanders had a good game. Nick Sirianni coached a hell of a game. But then things started to go downhill. You lose to San Fran. You lose to Dallas. You lose to Kansas City. And then you get a win against Carolina. An ugly win, but you got it. You start the season two and five. Then you go to Tampa Bay. Well, Tampa Bay comes to Philly. You lose. You go to Las Vegas, you lose. Right? Coming out of the bye, they lost. So, well, actually, that wasn't even a bye. It was just a long week. But the bottom line is they lost to Las Vegas, right? And then all of a sudden, you saw a switch. You saw something change. You saw something change. At that point, they're what? At that point, what are they? Three and nine? One, two, three? No, no. Four and nine. They beat Detroit and they're three and nine all of a sudden. Or three and eight, however you want to put it. The season didn't start off well. Then all of a sudden they just went on this crazy win streak. They beat Detroit. They lose the loss. They lose the Los Angeles, the Chargers, but they beat Denver. They beat New Orleans. They lose in New York, but they beat the Giant, the Jets, Commanders, Giants, Commanders again. Then they lose to Dallas in the last game. They made the playoffs. Rookie head coach made the playoffs, bounced back. Gets bounced in the playoffs by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a loaded roster at that time. They had a taste. They knew what it felt like to be in those playoffs. They knew what it felt like to be unprepared or under, undermanned, to put it that way. They were undermanned in that game. But that first season with Nick Sirianni started off turbulent, but he steadied the waters. Right? Things got a little bumpy. Things got a little rocky. These are the moments where you can either go left or right. There's a fork in the road. Will your team hold you down or will your team give up on you? Will you lead these men or will you fail them? Nick Sirianni put his ego to the side and said, Shane, I need you to take over play calling. It's a lot going on. I need to oversee everything. What did that do? Eagles in the season with a 9-8 record make the playoffs. You see... It takes a lot of self-awareness to be a head coach. It takes a lot of self-awareness to lead people. It takes a lot of self-awareness to lead grown men. Some of them are your peers from an age perspective. Some of them. So when you think about it from that perspective, Nick Sirianni had a lot of had 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 a lot to live up to. He walked into a Super Bowl winning organization. The first head coach to deliver a Super Bowl in Doug Peterson, he's coming in after that guy. That's a, those are big shoes to fill, right? Big shoes. <laughs> At this point, we got a taste. We only accept one thing, that Super Bowl wins. But then we come into the 2022-2023 season, right? We come into this season. And a lot of moves are made in the offseason, a lot of them. Hassan Reddick, Kaiser White, 
uh, A.J. Brown, C.J. Garner-Johnson, James Bradbury. Solid draft picks. Zach Paschal. In midseason, Limbaugh Joseph and Dominic Sue. Then on top of that, you hearing all offseason, will the Eagles try to trade for Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson? Will they make a move to upgrade at the quarterback position? Can Jalen Hurts be the guy? Jalen Hurts left a bad taste in the league's mouth with that Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Buccaneers performance. He lost the trust, not of his teammates, but of the world. But did he really earn it at that time in the first place? You see, as Eagles fans, we saw flashes, but we still had our concerns, our questions. We still were curious. We saw enough to give him another year of our good graces. But we knew this year had to be the year because we don't we didn't know how much leeway Harry Roseman would give Nick Sirianni and Jalen Hurts. We didn't know. We just didn't know. We knew Jalen Hurts would improve. Yeah. But we didn't think the organization, or we didn't know if the organization, rather, would have the patience to watch a young brother like that grow into his own. But Jalen Hurts, that young, that young boy, that young brother was ahead of schedule. You follow me here? Ahead of schedule. But he was right on time. Follow me here. I don't want to lose y'all. He was ahead of schedule, but he was right on time. I say all that to say, Eagles open the season, beating the Detroit Lions on the road. And man, oh man, it was curtains from there. They took it all the way to, I want to say, what was that? They took it all the way to week 10 before they got their first loss. What? They were 8-0 and no before they lost. Went on an eight-game winning streak. Running through the league, running through Detroit, running through Minnesota, running through Washington, Jacksonville, Arizona, Dallas, Pittsburgh, Houston. They was just putting bodies on the mantle. They was just serving them up. And then they suffered their first loss against the Washington Commanders. But how did they lose? That team turned the ball over, what, four or five times? For some reason, people were playing out of character. Fumbles. Left and right. Guys allowing the ball to bounce off their hands and lead to interceptions, right? Unforced errors, penalties, injuries. It was just an ugly game for everybody. But they suffered their first loss, and they didn't flinch. They suffered their first loss, had to bounce back against the Indianapolis Colts. Remember that game? It was, that was an ugly game, too. We thought they would have two losses in a row. But no, they stood the test of time. Jalen Hurts put on his big man pants. You feel me? He held, he held it down for his roster who was struggling. Remember, that was the time we brought in Indomit Gasol and Linval Joseph because we struggled to stop the run. Harry Roseman pulled the trigger. Once again, Harry Roseman doing his thing, being proactive. Jalen Hurts leads a game-winning drive. Ugly game, but they win 17-16. The winning streak is back up again. They go on a five-game winning streak, beating Green Bay, Tennessee, New York, Chicago, and then they lose to Dallas. Jalen Hurts gets hurt in the Chicago game. Remember that. Remember that. He got hurt. Why was Nick Sirianni, why was Nick Sirianni putting him in that situation? Why? But it happened. The reality was it happened. Jalen Hurts misses two games. Dallas and New Orleans. We lose both of those games. Gardner Minshew, hey, man. I'm just going to leave it at that. And then Jalen Hurts comes back from injury. You can tell he's a little limited, but they win. They get the number one seed. Nick Sirianni, a guy who was doubted from the beginning, had no faith in this man. They called him a clown. They said he was over his head. But he managed to turn this team from a 9-8 and eight team. Well, let's put it in perspective. He turned this team from a 4-11-1 team to a 9-8 and eight team and turned that 9-8 and eight team to a 14 and three team. Let's talk about it. Back then they didn't want me. Now I'm hot. They all on me. <laughs> That's just the name of the game though. You got to earn your stripes in this league. And Nick Sirianni has done so right now. He's in the Super Bowl with Jalen Hurts as his quarterback. Jalen Hurts leading a charge. Everyone's having career years. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Hassan Reddick, Josh Sweat, 
Brandon Graham, career years all around. James Bradbury, Darius Slate. Career years to go around. C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Everybody's playing out of their minds. Everybody's checking their box. Everybody's keeping the main thing the main thing. This journey is important. Because it's important for us to realize as human beings and our respective crafts, whatever we do for a living, whatever we want to do, our dreams, our aspirations, our goals, whatever we want to accomplish in this life, you're going to get doubted. You're going to get hated. Some people are not going, some people are not going to respect your path. Some people won't respect your journey. They'll start to be judgmental, like they're judging the Eagles for smacking the New York Giants, who is an inferior opponent. Like they're judging the Philadelphia Eagles for smacking the San Francisco 49ers, who is a, who is a comparable opponent, but they suffered key injuries in key spots and led to them being inferior. So people like to criticize your path. People like to criticize how you got here. But they can never do it like you. And sometimes they wish they was you. Sometimes they wish they could live your life. But nothing was given to these Philadelphia Eagles. They had to earn it every step of the way. And they made sure when they had a chance to stick the knife in and twist it, that's what they did. They made sure whenever the opportunity arose, they took it. And I think that's what's so different about this Eagles team, right? We've seen in years past opportunities come and we not take it. The, the Eagles have an opportunity to take it. When they've had an opportunity to dominate an opponent, they've dominated this is what they live for. This is what they work for. This is what you paid for, Eagles fans. All the jerseys bought. All the merch bought. All the donations. All the ticket sales. All those days standing in the rain. Standing in the ice cold, the frigid cold. Traveling city to city to city. This is what it's all about. Super Bowl 57, Eagles versus Chiefs. This is what it's all about. A moment to cement your legacy, to cement you in glory. A moment to be immortalized for eternity. They'll never forget you for this. This is why you have to take advantage of these opportunities. You can become immortal, Philadelphia. Once again, you can become immortal. Jalen Hurts can be immortalized. Nick Sirianni can be immortalized. Hey, listen, Jalen Hurts, you win this game. You'll never have to pay for another cheesesteak again. Nick Sirianni. Paisan, my boy. You, you win this Super Bowl, you'll never have to pay for another soft pretzel and another water ice again. Y'all know the culture. Y'all know Philly, man. But most importantly, I bet y'all know my man, Philly, Philly, the podcast, Joe Castro, man. He's a, a good dude. He grinds. He puts in the work. And, you know, my man, Philly, Philly, the podcast, he... He's built something pretty, pretty, pretty cool, pretty incredible. But on top of that, if I'm not mistaken, he's a he's an analyst uh, or a commentator, I believe, or a content creator, rather, or a producer. They probably got him wearing so many different hats over there at Fanfield Sports. If you guys aren't familiar with Fanfield Sports, Fanfield Sports is a media company created by Michael Vick, an NFT you know, advanced technology company that 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 marriages technology, the latest technological advancements with with sports media. Right. We all know NFTs and we all understand this is, you know, this is the crypto era and all that kind of stuff. And man, Michael Vick has is, is merging those those lanes. So, so it's going to be really interesting to hear what my guy Joe Castro has to say about these Philadelphia Eagles being in the Super Bowl. Who would have thought who would have thought you guys? But. First and foremost, before we take our break, I need you guys to smash that like button. I need you guys to smash that like button for all the sacrifices the Eagles had to make to get here. We had to sacrifice Carson Wentz. <laughs> take my own, take my firstborn son. <laughs> we had to sacrifice him. You know what I'm saying? We had to sacrifice Doug Peterson. Take my, take my father, take him to get where we are today. But make sure you guys smash that like button. You guys are locked in on Good Morning NFC East. I'm filling in for my main man, Jeff Kerr. I'm your guy, Tone. This show's the second. Keep it locked.